Hey Adventures, so today is going to be another book review. This is going to be for Becoming a Druid by Mike Mullman. This will also, I will also do my review of Sins and Sorrows, which is book 1.5 of this series. So, Becoming a Druid is book one, Sins and Sorrows is book 1.5. I haven't read book two yet, so I won't be doing a review of that one, but it just kind of, it the way that it worked out, it's better for me to actually get both, this, both these books done and reviewed right away. Or, or at the same time since they're the same series since I've read both of them, that type of thing. So, let's see. Uh, this is a fantasy, you know, a high fantasy, it's medieval, it's anamorphing, um, there's an adventure, there's a big, quite a bit of a quest storyline, especially in Becoming a Druid. So yeah, let's get right into it. So Becoming a Druid is, as I just mentioned, book one of in the Protectors of Pratani series. So the author, Mike Mullman, sent me an audiobook in exchange for an honest review of this book. Uh, this is a self-published fantasy story set in a world where druids are extremely powerful, our main, the, both in terms of um, magical abilities as well as influence in, in the world. Our main character in this book is Grami, and he is a young druid who hasn't really had the nicest life so far, all the way from his childhood and through the majority of his training. It's been kind of a pretty hard life for him. This book follows him on his quest as he goes to prove that he is worthy of becoming a druid, which as I, I didn't plan it that way, but it just kind of worked out that that was where the phrase ended up, and now I, <laughs> you can now, now understand why it's titled Becoming a Druid. And I, I like that. I like that it worked out that way when I was writing the review here. So this is a quest story where Grami goes out and travels across the land in an attempt to complete his quest. Along the way, as with most quests, or at least in fantasy, uh, his quest goes off the rails quite a bit and he ends up doing far more than he ever bargained for and essentially getting into a position where he kind of needs to save the world rather than just complete his quest and that's kind of how a lot of quest stories go and I really like it. I, I love the quest trope um, or subgenre if you want to call it that. They're both, it's both. So yeah, I very much enjoyed this book. This The world, the characters, and especially the magic all fit together really well to tell a very fun story, but also the writing style fits this story really well. It's very lighthearted, but not jokey, and maintains a level of maturity and seriousness throughout, while still being about a pretty young guy, I think he's early 20s if I remember correctly, 19, 20, 21, something like that. I can't remember for sure, it might be closer to 25, but I can't remember exactly, but either, whatever the case is, he's still a pretty young guy going through this world. The magic of this world is which is pretty much what you think of when somebody would say the phrase druid magic. From curses to actualization, which is a, a term that I don't think is actually official to magic, um, but I, does Kate have this book in here? Yes, she does. So this book right here, Quantum League by Matthew J. Kirby, is a book that the magic, or the, the it's actually superheroes, superpowers, um, and it's the, called actualization and that is the ability to create uh, a fireball or a blast of lightning or rain or something along those lines based on you in your brain and in your mind and in your body willing it into being essentially and um, I couldn't think of the correct phrase in terms of fantasy for what that would be called um, so I went with that term actualization which is actually one that I really like and I uh, that's that's a fun story and a good book that spell uh, quantum league spell robbers but there's also it's also got telepathic abilities and all the way the primary one being animal you definitely see the most of anamorphing because that is what our main character is most skilled at but I am not really upset by that in any way because I actually really like anamorphing and really any sort of shape shifting it's, for some reason, it's one of my favorite abilities, and I don't see it used that much. I also don't read a whole lot of, like, werewolf fantasy, or what is that? Fantasy romances, which are the ones that primarily have characters like werewolves in them. Um, I, I don't read a ton of that, and so I like seeing it when I do see it. And obviously, especially when it's well done, which here it is. I like the way that it's done. So I also wanted to do a review of Sins and Sorrows, as I mentioned, which is book 1.5 of The Protectors of Pratani, and it takes place between books 1 and book 2, which is obviously why it would be 1.5. This is two novellas or short stories, there's a little bit more to it, and I'll talk a bit about more, bit more about that in a second here. 
but it's two novellas or short stories or something along those lines. I don't know if they're specifically considered novellas or short stories or whatever, but they're two different, two sh stories that are shorter in length that tie together in some ways, but really are separate and are used as a way to flesh out the world and answer some questions that we'd undoubtedly have if we went straight into book two. I haven't read book two as of yet, um, as I already mentioned, but I can see how these things that happen in book 1.5 would affect book two and would be important to know in book two, or at least uh, be helpful to understanding the world better in book. And since I have read Sins and Sorrows already at this point, this is kind of the perfect time for me to review it. Fortunately, it does mean that it won't have a dedicated video to this book, to Sins and Sorrows. But that's okay, I'm alright with that. Again, it's still an honest review. It's just now the video is longer because it's got two reviews. Two, it's two books being reviewed rather than just one. And this one I also was sent the audiobook by the author for. Before I get into the rest of this review here, I would just quickly like to add that if you're liking what you're seeing from An Erudite Adventure, we'd really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. And we will get right back into this and go through my thoughts on Sins and Sorrows. So, as I just already mentioned, Sins and Sorrows really tells two main different stories, but there are also some a few shorter stories that serve uh, to give a bit more backstory to Grammy. And as I mentioned, they are connected, but not that closely. Um, that specifically that these two main stories that are being told are specifically connected to the main series. Obviously the three, I think it's three shorter stories or novellas or I, I think short stories is a good term for it about Grammy do obviously tie into the main series because it's Grammy. Uh, but yeah, so that's, they serve to flesh out his history. But these other two stories serve to flesh out the world and build out the world a little bit more and answer some questions that we would probably have later. The first of these two stories is about Conwenna, who is a character that we do meet in uh, Becoming a Druid. Briefly, we don't spend a ton of time with her, but this one, this story about her, it picks up pretty much uh, where we left off with it and left off with her story in uh, Becoming a Druid, where we met her and then left that character. And that's where this story picks up. And it tells a story that actually incorporates her history into the story as well as goes forward and continues telling the story from that point on. So it's kind of, it's not so much dual timelines as it is the past is being brought back up because it's important to the story that's currently going on in a way of, yeah, this happened in my past and now that's affecting where I am now type thing. The second of the main stories is about, uh, and this is, it's spelled A-L-F-S-W-I-C-H and I'm not entirely sure exactly how to pronounce it, but what I I had to go back and re-listen to chunks of, of this book to try and figure out if I could find at some point where they said the name, and I believe he said it Oswith, so that is what I'm going with. Another, this is another character that we briefly met in Becoming a Druid, um, he's a thief, and this book, or this story specifically, really goes a quite a bit darker because it's following a thief and kind of he's kind of an assassin at times it's it's dark it's gritty it's uh, painful full of thievery murder and curses and it's just it's very different from becoming a druid and very different from this first book or this other story about Conwina of the two I did prefer the story Conwina's story quite a bit more but Oswith's story did a ton for building out the world and I I always appreciate seeing world building done through story in the way that it was done here. So that's a very, this is a very Celtic inspired world and I really enjoy that. Um, I, I do really like uh, Ireland and uh, S Scotland and how those, the influences that those have had. Um, me specifically, I really like learning about that, that uh, area and seeing how people can use that and incorporate that into stories and I feel like it's done very well here. Obviously, Druidic culture comes from a more Celtic culture. There's also some other influences, obviously, but that's a, that's what we think of when we think of Druids is we think of, of Celtic areas. In many ways, it does feel like a fantasy version of the British Isles, which 
uh, I, again, as I mentioned, Celtic inspired. For the story being told and the fact that it is about druids, it actually fits really well that this feels like a fantasy British Isles. So I, I'm happy with that and I think it works really well here. Overall, Becoming a Druid, I feel like is a super solid, really fun, fast-paced fantasy novel and is a great start to the series. And then Sins and Sorrows, I, while I didn't enjoy it quite as much, um, I, I really liked Conwyn's story. I really, it was really good to, to have the, th the three shorter stories about uh, Grammy, and it was really nice to see the world being fleshed out with this story about Oswith. So all those things really are beneficial to the series, but uh, I, I didn't enjoy Sins and Sorrows quite as much, but it's, I mean, I still enjoyed it plenty and enough to keep going, and I'm very glad to have read it since I do plan to continue reading this series with book two, which is To Speak With Elders, and I don't have that book yet, so I will have to get that at some point and read that one or listen to it is what I'll probably end up doing. Yeah, so that is my review for Becoming a Druid and my review for Sins and Sorrows. By Mike Mullman. Thank you guys for watching an Aerodite Adventure. We post videos every Monday and Thursday, and our social media is linked in the description below. We will see you guys again soon. Stay warm.